Lord, in Jesus' name, we're asking that by your spirit, open our hearts and our minds to receive your word this morning and the principles that are being shared. Change us, we pray in Jesus' name. Change us. Amen? The next, oh, a few weeks, probably for many of us, will be the most important messages that you've ever heard, especially if you haven't heard the vein of what we're talking about. We're talking about the law of faith and operating in faith and so forth. We've covered a lot of ground to this point. This is the eighth message this morning, but it's been uh, four or five weeks since the last one, so let me bring you up to date a little bit and just jar your memories on what uh, we said to this point, what we've covered First of all, the system we live in, this earthly system, this realm we live in, was engineered by God to operate on the basis of faith. Amen. We showed you that. We, we showed you that from the Word. So I'm just kind of jar your memory here. So everything around us operates on the basis of faith because we are continually living in faith. It was created to serve us. It responds to our faith and the rulership that God gave to us. We literally frame our world or we create the world around us by what we believe and how we put that out there. And sometimes people say, well, I tried it for a week and I didn't see that much change. It's kind of like a big, big, big ship. This isn't a little speedboat that you just whip around. This, your course of life has been going for a long time a certain direction. And these big ships, to turn them around, they literally take miles and miles to finally, finally get that big ship turned. Look at it kind of the same way. This thing isn't going to change. I mean, if you've lived this way for 25, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, this isn't going to change in a week. This, this is going to take a little movement to, to bring it around. But we do, the, the world is designed to respond to us and our faith, we, we create the world around us. There are two streams of faith. Scripture talks it like, about it like this. It talks about belief, and we'll call this side God's stream of faith, and the other side Satan's stream of faith. And the Scripture comes from the direction either we believe this or we don't believe this. You're in belief or unbelief. And it's a very simple way of explaining it. But the Scripture also shows that when Satan rebelled and he fell, a new system of belief was born. Before he fell, it was just God's system, God's way. It was very simple, very easy. Now there's two ways to believe. You want just the bottom foundation? Jesus is Lord, Master, Jehovah is God. But there's another way you can believe, which goes with this flow. Jesus is not Lord and Master. Jehovah is not God. And there's multiple things we can believe over here. There's Hindu, there's Muslim, there's Buddha, there's witchcraft, there's Satan worship. There, there's all kinds of things you can believe. And if you believe that, you're in unbelief to the fact that Jesus is Master. And that's kind of the direction Scripture comes from. It says... Well, you believe them or you don't. And if you don't believe them, it calls you an unbeliever. But an unbeliever in this stream of faith is a believer in this stream. In, in everything. And we've tried to show that to you. God says we can be healed. If we don't believe that, we believe that God won't heal. We believe something. The human being has been designed to operate in faith. Everything we do, we believe something. When we don't believe, we don't do. Well, I don't believe that's going to work. Well, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to stick, stick a thousand bucks into it. Now, nah, I don't think it's ever going to work, but, you know, it's just kind of the way I am. Things I don't believe will work. I, I just love throwing money at them, and I don't know. We don't do that. Human beings go after what they believe. The big picture of that is there's God's kingdom, and the way his system operates, we can believe it, or there's the demonic kingdom, Satan's kingdom, kingdom of darkness, how it operates, and we can believe it. There's two streams or flows of faith. 
This one over here originated with Lucifer when he fell. But we are in faith all the time. So I took kind of a back door in on this. Rather than just kind of coming in from the front side, I went around the other side of the fence and came in, and we spent a couple, three weeks talking about scientific evidence on how our heart affects the world around us. And we spent time with scientific evidence on how our words affect the world around us. Remember the, the apple and the rice and so forth? The pictures and the experiment, as well as Dr. Emoto and the water and what happens to water when you speak to it and how they've been able to look at it and see the difference. Remember all that? Yeah. Nothing to do with Scripture. That is science is beginning to catch up to what the Bible has been saying for thousands of years. We've finally got the technology. We're actually proving the Bible true. It's been saying it since Jesus walked the earth. Well, it's actually been saying it a whole lot more. We, in Deuteronomy 30, you're, now you're back 1,500 years B.C. And it's been saying you form your world by what you believe and say. So this is not something that changed with Jesus. This has been here the whole time. Dave, do you have a mic? You hang on to one. Grab a mic. I want you. They did, an, you know, they got excited about the, the experiment with speaking to things, food. So Dave and Vicky tried something. I want them to share it. Uh, we took a kiwi, uh, kind of a group effort. Um, but we took a kiwi, we cut it in half, and we put it in two jars. And we started out that way, and we labeled one good and one bad. And we spoke good things to the one in the good jar. And we spoke bad things to the one in the bad jar, of course. And so after a week and a half, two weeks, we noticed that the good one looked pretty much the same. But the other one looked like it was forming a big round circle, probably about the size of a dime at the time of mold. It was just turning gray, black, kind of. And so we thought, oh, wow, this is really, you know, different, you know. And, th and that just proved what we were talking about. But then I got to thinking, I thought, well, you know, in Christianity, we talk about redemption. And I thought, what would happen now if we take and we took the bad word off and I put redeemed on there. And then we all started redeeming that. Other the one with kiwi. the mold on it? Yeah. It was, it was kind of fun. We were all making fun of each other as we we're, you're redeemed, you're, you know. <laughs> and so, but we did it. And, and then after, I don't know, what was it, five weeks, that white, that spot that was on the, the, the good one still looked good. I mean, it's still, it's turning a little kind of gray, but. It still looked good, but then the other one that had the big mold spot on it, the mold spot went away, and it looked just like the good one, you know, and so, yeah, it was, it was amazing. So, so we are redeemed, Yes, and we, we can offer we redemption. Redeemed, yeah. Isn't that wild? And then, I don't know, it just made me think of this, too, is, you know, we, we talk about cancers and different diseases. Well, it's no, you know, it's no wonder we can speak to that and make mm -hmm. it leave, mm -hmm. because... We can, we can take the decay or we can take whatever's there, and when we speak to it, it will leave. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah, that's exactly. That was a cool experiment. And how many of you have been frustrated with vegetables you get at the store? They don't last. And I've done it myself. You bring them in, you put it on the counter, you know, you got a little pile of vegetables, they're such 30 bucks. And I've said to Mary, and I suppose they'll be rotten in a few days, too. <laughs> just like they always do. And what did I just do? I just commanded them to start decaying and rotting. And a few days later, yeah, there's mold in the tomatoes and the lettuce looks all... See? Told you. But did we stop long enough to realize that when I said that, I just exercised my faith? Because I honestly believed they go bad quickly, and I spoke it over them. And what did they do? They went bad quickly. That's called unintentional faith. And we talked about that some. We live in unintentional faith. It's the things we believe that we're not saying, okay, I'm going to take this by faith now, and it's an intentional, we're believing God for this. It's just normal, humdrum, everyday living life and 
Yeah, we spent 30 bucks on vegetables and they'll all rot too. Unintentionally, I just exercised my faith. I believe it. I spoke it and it will try to obey me. That is the point we've reached now in the series to talk about application. So this is going to get really good and exciting because it's, it's where we live and how we live. Let me remind you of these two booklets. They're still available if you didn't get them. Uh, God's Creative Power by Charles Capps and then Quantum Faith by Annette Capps where she did what we were looking at from the science side and went to the molecular level with Scripture and showed how when we are actually exercising our faith, we're dealing with things on a very basic molecular lever, level. So if you need those, um, let's, let's do it right now. Does anybody need any of these? Just raise your hand. If you don't have any, we'll have the ushers come around and get them to you. And a little later in, I've got something else for you. So as you see the usher look in kind of your direction, raise your hand and I'll just keep speaking. <clears throat> this world has been designed by God to respond to us, the rulers. The human being was sent here to rule this earth. It's been designed to respond to us. The input we put into this system is what it will give back to us. And I tried to think of a way to illustrate that. I think I found one. Let's say that this piano represents the world. That piano was designed to put out music or sound. Depending upon the input you put in, it will always put out some kind of sound or music. Always. Whether you put bad input in, well, they turned it down, off. Give me, a, give me the piano. There we go. Bad input. You say, that's horrible. Well, yeah, that's the input. Yeah, I suppose these vegetables are going to rot. I'm going to feel lousy today. What we put in to this world system, God has designed the system to give back to us our input. So the key is, let's not intentionally definitely we'll talk about that but even unintentionally let's not haphazardly put in put in especially this stream of faith because it will give back to us what we put into it this one will do the same but a lot of times we say well i prayed and i asked god and La, da, 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 and nothing seems to be happening and I don't understand I'm trying to put input in and God doesn't answer well maybe we don't know how to input it could be as simple as God's kingdom operates a certain way and we're not in sync with how it operates Jesus explained it really simply. He said, I'm giving you the keys to my kingdom. So here's the keys that make everything in my kingdom operate. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. What you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. In other words, what we believe and declare is how it will be. Amen. That's a paraphrase of that. Bind means to declare unlawful or say no. So if we speak no, this is not the way this is going down. He said, would you do that on earth? He said, I'll respect that in heaven and I'll back that up. Amen. Or if you come from the other side of, no, this is the way it is going to go. His word has declared, his word has promised, this is the direction it's going. He says, okay, I'll back that up. Would you loose on earth, will be loosed in heaven. Correct. See, it's it's... Many times we come from the perspective of oh, if we can just pray hard enough or just pray long enough, we'll earn it. This is all by grace. You just have to learn how to get in sync with it so it functions. The problem is many times we're out of sync 
22, 23 hours of the day. And then we'll get home and it's been a rotten day, so we pray by ourselves or with our spouse. And okay, we're going to take five minutes. We're going to believe God for this. And the other 23 hours we canceled because we're not watching the input we're putting into the system. It's just that simple. I'm still trying to stay with scientific words so that you kind of get the idea of its, its input into this world system causes it to give back out. God created it that way, just like this piano. The input you put in. Ah, oh, that sounds horrible. Well, yeah, that's the input. Or you can put something decent in. See, you don't even have to know very much. And all of a sudden, it starts giving back what you're putting in. It's that simple. That's how faith works in this world. It's not you need more faith or I need more faith. We need to learn how to use our faith correctly because we're using it 100% of the time. Every word you say comes from something you believe. And the combination of belief and how you feel about it and it coming out of your mouth makes it faith. That is faith, Romans 10. Believe in your heart, speak with your mouth, boom. That's faith. So we're believing 100% of the time. God is intensely vested in our getting how this thing works and getting on the side to make it work for us because before sin, it just automatically worked for us. Then sin came in the picture, and now the whole thing got under a curse, and you have other options which seem to make so much sense, and we're scattered all over the place, and we're double-minded. Oh, we're just gonna, we're just gonna buy better vegetables, and God's gonna really help our vegetables last longer. Have you done anything with that? It's gonna rot. I just contradicted myself. Did you catch it? Because see, still way deep down inside, I believe if we don't do something with it quick, it's going to rot. But I'm trying to believe, well, we're going to believe God that it lasts longer. I don't really believe that, or the second statement wouldn't have come out. I'm trying to believe that God could make vegetables last longer. But what I really believe? Oh, great. Told you. Didn't use it, here it is in the garbage. Another five bucks gone. That's what I really believe. Because if I didn't really believe it, I wouldn't have just said it. Our words are what reveal our heart. I was talking to a total stranger this last week, and I'm, I'm really, I'm, 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 I wiped the table clean, got everything off, and I'm trying to rebuild this thing in my own life and get it better than it's, that it's been. I believed that for years and years and years, but I, it's like, yeah, there's stuff I'm doing unintentionally that is canceling, and I've got to quit that. I've got I to gotta get my heart solid on what God's Word says, solid. So this other stuff doesn't even fall out of my mouth. It's not even in, not even in the ballpark. So I'm talking to this perfect stranger, and I'm, I'm listening for this now for myself, because if you'll listen to your words, you'll see your heart. And this person says, I was at a garage sale, and this person says, well, we're doing thus and thus and this and that and the other. Things usually don't work out very well for us. And I went, just, whoa. See, she believes in her heart. The problem is it came out of her mouth, but that's not the core of the issue. The core of the issue is in, in her heart. She believes things don't work out very well for them. I said, oh, really? So, oh, yeah, all our life, it just seems like we always make the wrong decisions. I'm going, I'm going to quit asking questions. This is going from bad to worse. <laughs> Trying to have a conversation with her, and she's cursing herself. What she honestly believes in her heart is things don't always work out very well.
very seldom do they. She spoke that. Unintentionally, she aligned herself with this stream of faith. And then she starts giving me examples. For instance, and she's got an arms full of examples right off the top of her head. How that, well, we thought this, and then that went bad, and, we, and this, that fell apart, and, and that was a bad decision. And, and I'm going, God, is that what I sound like to you? Wow. Because she wasn't believing anything that the Scripture says, that a good man's ways are ordered by the Lord. I know the plans I have for you, for you to succeed and to prosper. The Lord's blessing us. The Lord. She wasn't believing any of that. It was all, well, you never know what's going to happen. It usually goes bad for us. Unintentionally, she was calling her life to keep falling apart because she is designed for this world system to respond to her, what she believes and what she says. And she didn't even know she was calling this bad, if you want to call it a bad streak of luck, she was calling it to continue because she's convinced it will. How many times do we do that? God is intensely vested in our getting this he saved us so he could get the holy spirit inside of us so he can engage with us 24 hours a day seven days a week teaching us leading us showing us he can begin to speak with us at any point in time then he gives us the baptism in the holy spirit to empower us so we can walk in supernatural power regarding this realm of faith so we can get rid of that one empower us as well as help us get control of ourself and the most wicked member of our body according to james 3 our tongue if there's one thing that really took a slam with sin it was our tongue but why is our tongue so important because it orders the course of your life according to what you believe so he gets the baptism of the Holy Spirit in there so we can get control of that. And he says to help you, I'm going to give you a new language so you quit talking the old one. Because the old one's causing you all kinds of grief and trouble. He wants the tongue. God is vested in seeing us succeed. The scripture says, your name, my name, our names are tattooed on God's hand. When God looks at his hand, he sees your name. Boy, that's somebody who's vested in your life. He knows the number of our hair on our head. We've been adopted into our, in the family. Why? So it's just not a bunch of random promises. We now, by inheritance, have right to these promises. He lives, he breathes, he moves. Scripture says we're the apple of his eye. It's like he just can't take his eye off of you. He's just continually... He's vested in you. He wants the best for us. So he wants to teach us how to operate in this stream of faith. He's the one who designed it. He wants to show it, how it works. He wants this thing, he wants this world to play for us like an instrument. Not in a haphazard nee, 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 way, but something that actually, yeah, see, now that is something that's producing. That's what he wants. And we live by faith all the time. We believe certain things. We expect these things to happen. We set up our lives on the basis of we believe certain things and we expect them to happen. I'll never fly because if I fly, I get sick. Well, congratulations, you just intentionally exercised faith. And unless you get out of this ditch of, yeah, you know, I, I, I've flown a few times. Every time I fly in a plane, I get sick, so I, I don't fly anymore. Until you get out of that and start believing the truth of what God has for you, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can fly in a plane. I don't have to get sick. Until you change that belief and quit saying it, every time you get in a plane, you'll be sick. 
So there's a period of time we intentionally have to cross over, and here's the kicker to the whole thing. Here is how we cross over. Thy word have I hid in my heart. The less we know about this book, the more we live over here. Because it just comes natural. It's just this fallen flesh, it just gravitates to junk. So if you are not spending much time in here, you don't know how God operates, you don't understand, and I'm going to say stay in the New Testament so you don't get weird on me. <laughs> I say that as a joke, but I actually mean it. Until you really understand the New Testament, stay out of the old, because Christians get weird when they get in the old, because they try to see all the types and the pictures, and they come up with weird stuff. You can't even make the new covenant work. Why are you trying to go back to one that passed away? I'm not saying there's not good stuff back there. We can learn things from back there. But filter it through the new covenant. Amen. But if we're not spending time in this book understanding what is it that God wants us in. God doesn't want you getting sick on a plane. Hands down, God doesn't want anybody getting sick on a plane. Well, I didn't realize that. You say, well, it doesn't say that in the Bible. What it does say in the Bible is he doesn't want you to be sick of anything. Nothing. Including what? Including airplanes or boats. You know, I'll never go on a cruise. Get on the ocean, man, I just get sick. Well, there you go. You believe for it, you said it, you're expecting it. We believe certain things, we expect certain things to happen in our lives, and we set up our lives on the basis of the first two. So you just told your body, when you step on the boat, start getting queasy. <laughs> and when this thing starts rocking, you're going to be upset, you're going to be near the toilet or whatever, because you're going to be sick. And you know what? It will obey you. Because this thing is designed to respond to our faith. It will obey you. I said it a while back. Let me say it again. And, and I can't stress this strong enough. I, you're going to hear me stress this over and over and over. Faith come, this, this stream of faith comes by hearing the word. The Holy Spirit takes the word, he shows it to us, and we go, oh, that's the way it's supposed to work. And here I thought it was that way. And the transition begins, and now we got to break old habits, get our minds renewed, get out of the garbage dump over here to where it really works. So we have to hear from the word. We have to understand what the word is saying. talked to somebody not long ago like I said my ears are open now and we were talking about economy and this that and the other and they say well I just hope it doesn't turn bad and we lose everything and I went Ew. and you hate at that point to keep talking with them because they just express the belief that if the economy turns bad I'll probably lose it they, that and now they're predicting and confessing according to what they believe you know because last time boy that was really messy. Okay, are you going to leave it that way? I mean, that's your confession of faith right there? I just know if the economy turns bad again, this time we'll lose it all. That is not of God's flow. That is of this flow. And you're believing it, and you're confessing it, and this system will try to produce it for you. God's word says, doesn't make any difference what the economy is going on. He can provide, will provide. He's never seen the righteous forsaken, their seed begging bread, and everything they lay their hands to will prosper. Amen. Economy turns bad, well, it turns bad. God will make new ways. And until we believe that, 
we won't say that. We can say it and not believe it. It does no good. See, that's where the confession, the faith movement, the confession thing went. That's part of where it went in the ditch. Well, if you just confess it. No, you actually have to believe it in your heart and confess it with your mouth. So it's vital. You're in the word. Daily. Letting the Holy Spirit speak to you out of the word because that's how he switches you from that realm of faith to this realm of faith. Because you are operating in faith all day long. The more we can operate over here and the less we can operate over here, the better it'll turn out for us. <laughs> Seriously. So we really have to be able to get in front of that. 2 Corinthians 5, 7, we live by faith, not by sight. Boy, that is an absolutely, there's no truer verse ever said. The problem is, it doesn't apply just to believers. Now, he's talking to believers there, but that doesn't apply just to believers. That applies to everybody. We think we live by sight, but we live by faith. Everything we do is by faith. You came here by faith this morning. You came in, you sat down. I'll, I'll venture to say if I went in the parking lot, there's not one car running out there. You know why? Because you believe something. You believe it will start when the service is over. So you turned it off. Right? And if you would have left it running and you left the car and your child goes to your daddy, aren't you going to turn the car off? Oh, yeah, we'll turn it off. If you'd have said to him, no, I'm going to leave it run because I'm not sure it'll start afterwards. Well, then that's what you would believe. But see, you all turned your cars off because you believe when you go out there, it'll start. That's an act of faith. You have no guarantee that car will start. You live by faith. There is nothing we say or do that isn't rooted in faith, whether we're saved or unsaved. Makes no difference. So let's talk about some of this stuff. For instance, let, let's go, let's start hitting some examples here. The first one I have on the list is healing, and I'm just going to ask you a bunch of questions. What do you really believe about healing? Can God heal? Sometimes God heals, and sometimes he doesn't. He might heal you, he might not. Can't depend on it. Definitely don't trust it. You can trust a doctor, but don't trust God. It's not a promise for today. I mean, is it? Only God's sovereign will is when he heals. And if any of those things, back up to the last screen, if you're questioning whether God can heal, chances of you getting healed are really bad. Because what you believe is what's going to come to you. It's how it's designed to work. Sometimes he does heal. You might hit one now and then if you actually believe that. Well, sometimes he heals, so we're just going to keep praying. Well, sometimes you'll get healed. Because that's what you believe. Well, it never hurts to pray. Yeah, that's a faith-filled statement, isn't it? <laughs> he might heal you, he might not. Well, there, that's... What did Jesus say? Be careful how you hear, because with the measure you hear, it will be measured to you. If you heard in your heart and you believe well god might heal me he might not that's how it'll be measured to you your faith will respond to your belief and you'll get some healings and you won't get some well you can't really depend on it then that's what you get don't trust it or have you spent enough time in the word that the holy spirit not Pastor Vern, not Benny Hinn. These would be the people more on this side. Then I could, and I don't want to list them, but then there's preachers who kind of list more with this side. Well, you know, healing passed away. It's not for today. If God sovereignly chooses to do something, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But most time you can't count on or depend on it because it's not. Yeah. And there's ministers 
who declare that. Well, you're going to have to decide what you believe. So it would do you well to not listen to ministers, but to go and find it yourself. And get it off the page into your heart. So you know that you know that you know. Yeah, it's for today. It's for me. God wants me healed. He can heal. He does heal. And he will heal. He paid for it in the atonement, just like my, any other area of my salvation. It's there. It's mine. Our speech, it, it just reveals the stream of faith we're in. But it does more than that. It also calls the result of that to us. Amen. The battle is for your heart and tongue. So let's go back to something. It applies to everything. So let's go back to last weekend. We had uh, <clears throat> talking about hell and the fear of God and repenting and things like that. And we had a number of people who the Holy Spirit spoke to them, they said, you know, you really need to deal with this. And that is a key. Let me please emphasize that. Because, again, I was talking to someone this week, and they said, well, what should we repent of? I said, well, you want a legalistic list? Or do you want to know how God approaches this? Because, see, I can come up with a thousand things you should stop doing. And I could hand you that list, you'd be totally overwhelmed, walk away and say, I can never do it. That's why the Holy Spirit doesn't do that. Every one of us, the Holy Spirit is dealing with two, maybe three areas in our life. Right now. And as we overcome them, and as we get past them, and we grow past them, and we go, finally got that one taken care of, Woo, new one slides right in. And it's kind of the rest of our life. He's working with us. He's working on us. Two, maybe three. I've never heard a person say more than three, that he's really emphasizing, I want you to do this, this, and this. That's it. Because we become overwhelmed. It, it gets too big for us. So I said to the person, I said, what does the Holy Spirit talk to you about? Last Sunday, when you stood up here, what did he talk to you about? That's what you deal with. Don't go in and make up this big, long list. Well, I heard someone else, they were, they were repenting of that. Maybe I should do that, too, because I do that, too. And then this person on this side of me said this, and I remember what Grandma said, and then we used to go to this church, and there's 15 things they said that I still haven't done. And it's like, what, what am I supposed to do? What did the Holy Spirit say to you? That's what you do. And you don't worry about the rest. And, folks, that's where we as Christians have to give each other grace. Because what he might be talking to me about, he may not be talking to Matt about. And I'm getting convinced that I need to stop something, and Matt's just having a good old time. I love this. I don't, and I'm going, I can't even do that, God. Why are you letting him do it? I don't know. God's probably dealing with him in a different area that he's not dealing with me in. But we get the attitude of, God told me this needs to stop, so you need to stop it too. Hey, wait, 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 back out of that. You're not God to declare to other people what they do or don't do. Let the Holy Spirit tell them what they should be doing. But we get into that. And then that's where everything goes sour because now we're trying to overcome something on our own strength because the Holy Spirit never even got involved with it. Aunt so-and-so said, you need to do this. And so we're trying to do it, and we're just miserable failures. Well, did God tell you? Well, no, but Aunt so-and-so did, and she's a godly woman. She's gone to church all her life. I don't care. Wait till God tells you. Amen. You say, but there's other people that, you know, I'm doing stuff, they're not. That's okay. They're doing stuff, you're not. We're not living for each other. They that measure themselves among themselves, that's unwise. We're living for God. What he tells me to do, I'll work on. What he tells them to do, they'll work on. What they're working on is none of my business. And what I'm working on is none of their business. Huh? So we had people lined up here and, okay, so you repented of your sin. You asked forgiveness for it. Now, how are you going to beat it? How are you going to overcome it? 
had all different kinds of things mentioned to me. Smoking, uh, some form of drugs. Um, I, I don't want to mention them all, but there, there was all kinds of different things mentioned to me by different people. I, I really struggle with this, so I, I went up and I repented for it. Good, that's the start. But now how are you going to beat it? Because in reality, you believe that without that cigarette, you're going to get really antsy, uptight, and ugly. Or without that drink, you're not going to relax. You believe it. Well, I know it's wrong. I, sh I shouldn't be doing it. The Holy Spirit's talked to me about it. I shouldn't be doing it. I know it's wrong. So I said, I'm sorry. But now how are you going to stop it? Once the service is over and everybody left, and you're home alone, or you're driving down the road alone, nobody to prophesy over you, give you a word, it's you and God. How are you going to bring into everyday life the thing you just repented of? Do you know how you're going to do it? By faith. Because everything around you will respond to what you believe. That's why you're in bondage at the moment, because you believe it's the way it should go. You believe you can't beat it, whatever, it's what you believe. However you look at it, it's what you believe. So whatever you were standing up here for last Sunday, those of you that were, have you found any scripture to give you any promises concerning your problem? You have to. You have to. You can, you can say, well, I'm just not going to do it anymore. Man, that'll work for a few days. So now let me take it one level deeper. This world is designed to respond to us in the physical as we, as we believe and as we speak. But there is a spiritual aspect to this world too. There's the demonic aspect, which causes this belief system, and there is God's aspect, which causes this belief system. So when we say, I'm just going to stop, I won't do it anymore, this realm goes crazy and goes, oh, no, you won't. You're not going to stop. And opportunities come. I had one person say, Pastor, I told God I'm going to quit smoking, and I threw my cigarettes away. The next two days, I never had so many free cigarettes offered to me in all my life. Is that coincidence? Absolutely not. That is this realm getting all stirred up, saying, we're not letting you go. Because the person said, well, I'm just going to quit. They get all wound up. So now we have to fight spirit with spirit jesus said in john 6 my word is spirit so what scriptures applied to your problem well i don't know i never read the bible bingo that's why you've got the problem and it's why you'll never get over the problem because this spirit realm will set you up to continue operating over here because you're not giving this side of the spirit realm enough attention, time, and vest into it so it can change your life. You find a scripture or two or three or I usually, if depending upon if it's a big problem, I'll ask for a number of them and then I'll memorize them. Say, what are you doing? I'm getting ammunition. So as a suggestion to the person, I said, are you quoting any scripture over your desires to smoke? No, I didn't know there were any. You know, you know what you just told me? You spend no time in this book. Well, I read it once. I know what's in there. This is life to us. These words are life to us. 
Jesus called them the bread of life. We need to eat them daily. You can't exist. Jesus said, no man liveth by bread alone, but by every word. It's a daily sustenance to us. These are life to us. If we're not eating of them daily, we get sick and weak spiritually, the same way if we're not eating physical food, we get sick and weak physically. Same analogy. He said, well, I, I don't, wouldn't have any clue where to start. I said, well, do you ever even think of asking? You have not because you ask not. Maybe ask, God, what do I do with this? I don't even know what to say or believe to this thing. Oh, that's a good thought, and they wrote it down. It's like, cool, if that's what it takes to remember it, write that down. So then I just started rattling off some scripture, because it's just plain, addictions all fall in the same category. I mean, you don't need new scriptures for different kinds of addictions. They all fall in the same category. All you need is scriptures that tell you who you are and what God's will is for you. So I just started rattling some stuff off in a paraphrased version. For instance, all things are lawful for me, but I won't be brought under the power of anything. Anything that controls me is not God. What well, doesn't control me, I just can't stop. That's controlling you. That's what it means. That's controlling you. I said, find that verse. You look it up. You know, instead of buying some of this other stuff you buy, go buy yourself a concordance so you can find these things. You look it up. You memorize it. And when that urge comes, you speak out loud what the Holy Spirit has, not what Pastor Burns said you should do. You've got to get in the Word long enough that it drops into your heart to where you realize Jesus paid it all so I don't have to be controlled by anything in this world system. Nothing. You have to believe that. And once it goes down into your heart, and it's like, I know for a fact, that, that is exactly what the Word says, and I'm 100% in, then you speak to that addiction, and you say, you're not going to control me. What are you doing now? You're releasing faith. And you're pushing back on this side and saying, you know what? God says, I don't have to be controlled by you. So now take it a step deeper. People who aren't controlled by something have no desire for it, no cravings for it. So you start saying those kind of things. See, since I'm free, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Next verse, so continue in my word. Because it's the word that drops into us to set us free. So since I'm free of you. Well, I still crave it. Well, yeah, now you got to turn the ship. Start using your faith. Do you believe he's got you free? Yes, I believe Jesus died to set me free. Then start talking to it. I don't like to smoke. The thing gags me. I will never accept another free cigarette from anybody. I hate smoking. I will not be controlled by it. It will not have any I'm, I've wasted as much money on it as I'm ever going to spend again I'm done with you get out of my life what are you doing you're exercising your faith because you actually came to believe you could be free of it so now you're going to talk that way intentionally talk that way you won't win the addiction by white knuckling. I just never gonna do it again. I'm never gonna do it. I'm never gonna do it again. I'm never gonna. In reality, you're concentrating so much on the negative, the, the realm doesn't know what to even respond to you. What are you gonna do? This is a, a system that responds to what we, faith is what we're going to do. Not, well, I'm never gonna do that again. I'm not, that's not faith. I'm never gonna do it again. I'm never gonna do it again. You can't drag me away to do it again. I'm, I'm, I'm never. That's not faith. Faith is calling those things that are not. Faith is movement towards someplace. Not, I'm just going to stand here. No. What are you moving towards? I'm moving towards freedom. I don't need cigarettes. 
I'm not going to wake up in the middle of the night craving them. Body, I am speaking to you. All that nicotine and all that garbage, flush out of me. I don't need you. I don't want you. You're not going to be part of me. And any demonic thing, I submit myself to God and I resist you. You get out of here. I want nothing to do with you, spirit realm stuff. I am choosing total freedom, and he whom the Son sets free is free. And start quoting some scripture to it. Exercise your faith for your freedom. And don't unintentionally, see, you really got to guard yourself. Don't unintentionally, okay, I did that, Pastor. Boy, I wish I had a cigarette. Don't unintentionally do that. Because now you just became double minded. You say, well, what do you do with that? What does the word say? See, it all goes back to the word. I had someone say to me, well, pastor, I, I, I know I shouldn't be saying some things, but what should I be saying? You should be saying what the word says about you, what it declares you are. And if you don't know it, it's time to get into it and know it. The fact may be you have a craving, but the truth is, the craving has to kneel, every name that's named has to kneel to the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what it says. So, yeah, I got up this morning, I had a craving. But you know what? In the name of Jesus, that craving leaves me because I want nothing to do with that anymore. It leaves me, it's over, it's gone. You call it what it will be. That's faith. See, so for the next few weeks, we're going to example after example after example after example after example show you how we are sometimes intentionally, most of the time unintentionally, lining up with this stream of faith. Mary went to a woman's group a number of months back, so you'll never figure out which one it was. And she, they had lunch before she spoke. She came home, she said, dear Jesus, she said, these women are so deep into unbelief, it makes you wonder if you should even speak. Because they're totally set on what they believe. Well, you know, when you get old, your body breaks down. You're going to get a disease. You know, Esther died of cancer. That's just the way it works. Is that what the Bible says? Well, why are we believing it and speaking it? Mark my word, by next year, one of us is going to be dead. Time to switch tables. I don't want to be one of us. She said, that's how the whole meal went. The whole conversation. You know, I heard that Peggy and her husband were running out of money. I can just see where this is going. They're going to be in the poorhouse. There isn't an ounce of faith coming from anybody toward God's direction. But there's a 100% vestment in poverty. We're broken. We're going down. It's going to crash. It's going to burn. Have you ever heard of Dr. Kaborki? And I've considered that from time to time because you just got to get out of this mess. You know, Dr. Kaborki, suicide assisted. Okay, some of you are going, who's Dr. Kaborki? <laughs> Folks, we really have to stop and go, what do I really believe? What do I really believe? Not the Christian face I put on. What really do I believe? Because that's what comes out of my mouth. And what's coming out of my mouth, what I really believe, does it agree with this book? Because without the spirit realm's help on either side, what we believe and speak, the earthly system tries to bring to us.
without the spirit realm's help. Now, God is 100% vested. He's in. He's given us power. He's given us, you know, you don't have to take three months to turn the boat. He can turn it in one prayer, and you're free. I mean, he's vested in this thing. But then people will walk away and lose what he just gave them because they still believe this. And all of a sudden, the miracle he did is gone. And they believed their sickness back. They believed their job gone. They be, well, we prayed I wouldn't lose my job, but only took two weeks. I knew it was coming. I lost it. Well, then what'd you pray for? You knew it was coming. Just resign early and get out of the, all the worry. Quit. You believed you were going to lose it. You said you were going to lose it. Why are we wasting our time praying? Well, can't God do something? Yes, he can. He can change your heart so you actually believe different. Now, your whole life will change. But just getting up in a prayer line, having a prayer or two for a minute or two, and then the rest of the 24 hours, you're out there professing and believing all that stuff, nothing's going to change for the good. Be a miracle if it did. So we're going to go over all kinds of examples. Because inadvertently, we live as believers, Christian believers should be believing what God has. Inadvertently, we live over here. We, we believe it, we speak it, we expect it. We just know it's going to happen. I just know. I, I just know. I just quit deer hunting because I just know I'll never get a decent deer anyway. That's, God's not capable of providing that kind of stuff for you. He's too weak. He don't care. He did. So you settled over here on, yeah, I just know. It won't work for me anyway. Never did. Well, keep talking and believing that way. You can go keep hunting and never will. It would be a miracle if you shoot something. Why? Why do other Christians get their prayers answered? Because they're believing over there, not over here. They're actually believing God could provide something for them. You're believing, I'll never get anything. And that's what you get, nothing. Everything in life we do. Heard one person say, you know, this fishing opener stuff, I'll never take my boat out and fishing opener. I just know for a fact and all that traffic and everything, somebody's going to run into my boat and wreck it. I said, yeah, you probably should stay home. Seriously, you're not believing for the protection of God. You're not believing that he'll take care of you. You're not believing he will go before you and be your rear guard. You're not believing that, that no weapon formed against you will prosper. You're believing and you're saying, if I drag her out of the garage, I may not even make it to the corner. Somebody's going to smack me. You better leave it in the garage. Wait for a different weekend because you're believing that into existence. And I can guarantee you sooner or later it'll happen to you. And then you come and say, see, pastor, I told you I should have never taken it out. Well, yeah, you believed for it. And that's how we live. But we're going to change, aren't we? Every little word drops out of our mouth we're going to pay attention to. And when the word does come out, be quick to repent if it's off. I, I'm so, sorry, God, shouldn't have said that. And then go, Holy Spirit, why did I say it? What do I really believe? Why did that come out? Why did I say that? Because something's off in here. That's why it fell out of my mouth. What's off in here? Speak to me. Show me. Literally, we create the world we live in. Here is, you can all grab one of these. The ushers will, where for time's sake, I'll just have them grab it for you on the way out or have them stand at the back and they can hand it to you in the way out if you want one. This is called the Faith Aid. It's put together by my pastor. It just covers different topics of what we, some basic topics. Of course, you can't have a lot of them in here, but some basic topics of what we should believe and just gives us, it's just full of scripture. It just gives all kinds of scripture for it. Yeah. Um, I can't stress it strong enough. Watch what you say this week. Because what you say is revealing what you believe. So many, so many people 
set themselves up for rejection. Well, people just don't like me. You believe that, don't you? Yes, I do. And you just said it, didn't you? Yes. Guess what you're going to get? Well, I just don't have many friends, and you'll never have many. You will never have many. Because you believed it into existence. And people will be repelled from you, not knowing why they're repelled from you. You just get around you, it's like, you. Why? Because you believed for that. Well, what should you believe? God will give me favor with him and man. You want friends? Show yourself friendly. People are going to be attracted to me. People will want to hang around me. People will like me. You say, I don't believe it. Then get into the word, find the scriptures the Holy Spirit wants to drop into your heart to change your belief system. And as it's changing, you begin saying what God says about you. And you'll be surprised how quickly you'll have friends. Oh, I don't believe it. That's why you don't have any. You don't believe it. And we unintentionally exercise our faith all day long. And if we're not really, really careful, we're exercising on that side. I feel like I'm swinging, and I'm not sure I'm hitting ball. Did you get anything out of this? Okay, we're going to pay attention this week. All right. We'll come back for another few batting lessons next Sunday, and hopefully I can hit the ball again. And we, we get this into us, because literally, as we believe and what we declare is what comes to us. That's why in Deuteronomy 30, he says, choose life or choose death. You're going to choose it with your tongue, he said. And then he said, by the way, choose life. You know, if you got a choice, go with life, because you're going to get what you call. So, Lord, bless us with the ability to listen to ourselves and people who are close to us, spouses or family members. Lord, we don't want a bunch of anger and a bunch of defensiveness and that we want to learn. What are we saying? Help us listen to each other, listen to ourselves, and then, Holy Spirit, show us what we really believe. And then we take that and lay it against the word, against your kingdom and what we should be believing. And Lord, I'm believing for complete transformation in us. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Have an awesome week.